press the record button. There we go. Well, welcome back. Nice to have everyone back here. I hope you had a quick, nice little getaway before coming back to your screen. And it's very much my pleasure to welcome Yasmin Lambert here to give you a session. So she is a somatic educator and the creator of Soma Sensing Movement Therapy for Chronic Pain and Trauma Recovery. So she also needed to heal from her own symptoms um, and finding in earlier in her life, finding numbing ways to escape from them. So when she discovered somatic movement approaches over 15 years ago, she's devoted herself to learning and studying the connection between the body and the mind, exploring movement um, throughout her life. So she's done yoga, Pilates, Feldenkrais, mindful. Her jump. Yeah, uses various techniques like pandiculation and um, the calm response, among many other things. So she's now created Soma Sensing, and um, it's lovely to have her here to give her talk on the issue is in the tissue. So welcome, Yasmin. Thank you, Steve, and welcome, everyone. I am going to dive straight in just to make sure that we, we fit in with time. So... Uh, just going to share my screen with you. And let me see if I can get this into your full, full screen. Oops, there we go. Okay, so before I begin, if you can just take a moment to just take a moment wherever you are to have a little check in with your body. And it's a really simple practice of noticing the way that you're sitting and to explore whether it's the most comfortable place for you to be in your body in this moment. So diving into this practice of tuning in and finding what feels comfortable. And that is it. It's just self-adjusting to find what feels comfortable. It might mean that you stand up again. It might mean that you lean back in your chair, whatever it is. And I'm sharing with you a really simple somatic practice of checking in with the quality of your tissue, how soft you are, how stiff it is, how comfortable it feels, and that you have the ability to self-adjust in any moment. So noticing how that emerges from within your own body and how that little shift may change your state or it may not, depending on where your awareness is. And either way is fine. So just arriving with that little practice and then bringing your awareness to where you are in the moment. And I want to spend the next 50 minutes kind of just sharing with you what's emerged from my own journey. So what is the issue in the tissue and what is this tissue? And I'm not sure if all of you here are aware of fascia, our connective tissue. And if you just look at your skin and pull up your skin, if you were to pinch your skin, that is your connective tissue. It's everywhere. And I like to refer to it as our fabric of embodiment and we'll explore why in a moment. And this fascia as felt sense and how pain is our inner story. So when I first started with chronic pain, people would come to me with physical pain. And in my days of clinical rehabilitation, don't even like that word anymore, we would always look at what's the mechanical issue in the musculoskeletal structure. And so much has changed since then because we cannot separate the body as a separate system. So when I refer to pain as the inner story, what I mean by that is that there may not be physical pain, but there might be a physiological response to emotional pain or physical pain. There's a physiological response 
your physical pain could be the response of an emotional um, trauma in your life. It could be stress, overwhelm. But here, I'm going to focus a bit more on pain as your inner story. And the reason I'm going here is because I spent many years helping people with physical pain. And about two years ago, I started to notice heart palpitations at night. I would go to sleep and I'd be awakened by these heart palpitations. And for those of us who work with trauma and uh, the polyvagal theory and fight, flight, freeze and fawn or faint, I would describe my state as being in fight, flight in my early years. So this was completely new to me, this, this feeling of heart palpitations as I was going to sleep at night. And I'd fall asleep. Within minutes, I'd be awoken by these palpitations. So I've put in here atrial fibrillation. And the insomnia began. Um, anxiety in a very low form. It was so unfamiliar to me, so unfamiliar, because this happened in my 50s, right? I was already in my 50s. And prior to that, I was in fight flight or I had managed with my somatic practice to calm the nervous system. And I won't go into the incident that led to this, but what I want to share with you is that we can numb the pain. We can, we can I, I was pain free, I had no chronic pain, but I had these other physiological conditions. And what was my saving grace is was my understanding of our wholeness and within our wholeness lies this fascia our fabric of embodiment so let's go back to the beginning when we start life as an embryo and this is the work of an embryologist by the name of Jaap van der Waal he's incredible he looks at the biology of wholeness and Yap's take is that we are already whole and complete by the time we're born. And what he means by that is that we start out as a gel. And the easiest way to um, explore this is cracking open an egg. And if you look at an egg, it's just gel-like. And how does that egg become a little baby chicken and then a full-grown chicken, right? Um, it doesn't grow, it self-emerges, self-organizes, and we have the, the ability to self-regulate. So what do I mean by that? In this gel, we are born with, a, we, or before we're born, we have a code. And everything in nature has a code. And if you're interested in our design and in nature's blueprint or God's thumbprint as um, a physicist calls it by the name of Jill Khalili, he's from the UK. Um, if you're interested in that kind of stuff, just write this down, the secret life of chaos. Go to YouTube, look up the secret life of chaos if you want to know how everything in nature is based on a, an algorithm or a blueprint. So we already have a blueprint of self-emerging. So this little embryo that becomes who we are. So we don't grow or develop, we change. And we change based on our life experiences. The shape of our body changes based on our life experiences. And this gel that we begin from starts out um, with as, as kind of saliva almost. So it's a gel and within that gel you have everything that helps you to self-emerge. So fascia is our fabric of embodiment and these days fascia experts or fascia researchers like to call it the fascial matrix because it's more than the gel. It is the collagen fibers. We are 90% collagen. Think of ligaments, your skin, the um, the, the, the kind of wrapping around muscle tissue. And by the way, every strand of muscle fiber is shaped by fascia. 
So fascia is this body-wide connective tissue. It was previously thought to be a packing and a shaping material. So we've known about fascia, but we haven't known about this gel within the fascial matrix. And what's incredible about it is that it is embedded with millions of nerve endings. So it's intimately connected with our nervous system. It is our felt sense. It is, uh, you can call it your sixth sense or seventh sense if you take the gut or enteric nervous system into consideration. And prior to looking at felt sense just from the nervous, uh, nervous system perspective, um, in my Pilates days, we came across uh, electromagnetic energy through someone by the name of James Oshman. So if you're interested and you're a, you're a geek and a nerd about felt sense and what makes us sensitive from a neuroscience or a science perspective, you can, go, you, know, you can go out and look for these people. But James Oshman made a huge impact on me early on in my life. Um, and then we have the polyvagal theory, but the overarching message from me to you is that we are super sensitive. We are resonating beings. Fascia is known to have or respond to sound. We are like a musical instrument. So your ligaments and that strapping around the organs and your um, around muscle tissue is resonating. Fascia is said to be more sensitive than your eyeball. And that was from Tom Myers. My very first connection with fascia was with Tom Myers of Anatomy Trains in 2004. And since then, I've been uh, learning from people like Robert Schleip in particular, John Sharkey more recently, and some of you may know Gary Carter. I attended my very first workshop with Gary Carter in the same, at the same time, 2004, and Joanne Averson at the same time. So these people are coming to the fore with the time that they've dedicated to understanding fascia. And um, I've been a nerd and, a fas and fascinated with it from then. But I must add here, it was never from a body-mind connection. Oh my gosh, I was a gym junkie at that time. You know, the body to me was completely separate to my sensory self or, or sensing self. As, as many of us. So just know this, you are attuning from moment to moment. Our bodies cannot take sensation and, or an overwhelm in sensation. So the brain has this capacity to numb sensation and sensory motor amnesia is linked to our numbing of sensation, a necessary coping mechanism when we are in overwhelm. So soma sensing is really about how to quieten the noise and bring the body back into resonance or regulation. Every living cell lives within the fascial matrix. It would include your nerve cells, the organs of your body, um, the, your, your lymphatic system, your hormones. So it's, it's such an important tissue to become aware of for reasons that I began the session with at the very start. And we're going to dive into that a little more. We are shape-shifting. So if you imagine, when, when we started looking at the body and um, stiffness and chronic pain, we always looked at the stiffness, the stiffness in the lower back. If you imagine rounding through your shoulders and we have this image of a perfect posture. So that's where my life began in terms of helping people retrain or reshape their body. It was through looking at something needed to be reshaped externally because the structure was either weak or it was dysfunctional. And listen to the language, right? Imagine someone coming to you 
with a lifetime of trauma and now they're sitting in front of you and you're saying to them that um, their posture is dysfunctional. So it was shape shifting my own beliefs into recognizing that there is no such thing as a perfect posture. What there is, is an honoring of our embodiment, an honoring of the, the way that our lives have been shaped, an honoring of our body from compassion, that the shaping that we have has come not of our own making, but of our relationship with our parents, with our community, with the color of our skin. And at a time such as this, you know, it's awakened something within me with regards to color, but from a place of curiosity. So I just want to throw that in, in terms of shape shifting. So my language changed from posture to embodiment. You'll notice that I would never use the word exercise, for example, that, that came away from my vocabulary because exercise requires effort. And in this world that I was entering, what I discovered from um, one of my mentors, Stephen Levin, is that uh, Sindra mentioned biotensegrity, um, that her, our whole paradigm on the way that we thought we were designed was completely false. That we are this beautiful organism that has an effortless way of moving through life. So we can take the pressure off having to exercise for strength. Gentle is the new strong. So where does soma sensing takes, uh, take us then? It takes us into nourishing, nourishing, nurturing our hurt, nurturing our trauma implicitly through movement. So any sign of disruption in your connective tissue will show up as stiffness, inflammation, fibromyalgia. So here I'm actually bringing in those physical qualities of your connective tissue. Your body, you can replace fascia with body, should feel revitalized, energized, buoyant. And the way we can get to that is through really simple movements that you already know. That blueprint that I mentioned earlier oh my goodness, we have a nourishing blueprint within our body that can heal our whole selves. This is what fascia looks like in its many forms from the saliva in your, your mouth. And we've got this salivary gel throughout our entire body. There are no empty spaces within the body. Everything is, is held within the body with connective tissue in its many forms. So imagine um, a, a fabric that can take up many forms, a bit like um, fabric that you buy. You know, it can be lycra, it can be denim, um, you know, it can be netting. So that's kind of the fibrous part of fascial tissue. But it's the gel that I'm really intrigued with. So here you have bone, you have um, that little image in the center is from, Jean-Paul uh, uh, Jean Gimberto, who's a hand surgeon, and he has these amazing images in vivo of our connective tissue. It glistens. And if you look at this image in the middle, you can see those strands. And if you imagine our bodies as a string instrument, as a percussion instrument, resonating from moment to moment, and what we're looking for is fascia to be juicy and plump and hydrated. So what makes it sensory? I talked about the nerve endings within the tissue. Robert Schleip is my go-to person for these um, sensory nerve endings. And when, we, when I started within the movement sector, when I first did anatomy and physiology, we, we were taught proprioception, body awareness. And here I want to make the distinction. There's body awareness. And um, let me just describe that for you as we're sitting here. So body awareness or proprioception would be then take a moment to notice. So if you take a moment to notice um, the position of your body right now. 
Okay, just notice the position of your body and notice the pressure. So if you can take your awareness to your pelvis and just notice if there is pressure on certain parts of your buttocks, for example. Noticing the way that your feet make contact with the ground. And what I'm guiding you with right now is body awareness and proprioception, which is important in somatic practice too. But now we have interoception. And interoception was often referred to emotional signals from the body, which is true. And here's the most fascinating thing that I found is that we have more interoceptive nerve endings within the fascial tissue than we have proprioceptors. There are seven times more interoceptive signals. And what are they? Interoception are the signals that, we, um, that emerge from within the body to inform us of, of the state of our, our well-being, our nervous system of our rhythm, our, of the inner rhythm of the body. And we know them, we are familiar with them as butterflies in your tummy, heart palpitations when you're in love or you're feeling anxious, and also that warm, fuzzy feeling. So if you can take a moment where you are right now and just stroke your, your, your forearm, whether you're right or left or forearm, doesn't matter. If you can just gently stroke your forearm with your fingertips. Just take a moment with the gentlest of touch, as light as a feather. So if you would take a moment to stroke your forearm or even, um, doesn't matter whether it's the top of your arm or the underneath, just gentle stroking, ever so gentle, just one way. And as you're stroking gently, notice what happens to the rest of your body. What's that felt sense? Okay, so just notice that. Sensual touch is an interoceptive felt sense. It happens within the interoceptive signals of your skin. So that's what interoception is within the body, within your fascial tissue. Um, that urge to pee is an interoceptive signal. These are important inner signals from the body that can help us to self-regulate. And in soma sensing, that's what we dive into. These C fibers, I'm going to just pass on with this one, but here I just want to mention that when you're stroking the, your skin, you have those interoceptors within your viscera, within this container of your body. They're everywhere. And this is why nurturing movements feel the same as if you were to feel a sensual touch. You're kind of um, shifting state or changing, you're finding what feels good in soma sensing movements. So, and it's quick, it, it works really, really quickly. It, it's, a, it's a bottom up approach to shifting your habitual pathways. And in the slide, I just want to mention Dr. Bud Craig. If you haven't already, some of you might know of Bud Craig, who's written a book called How Do You Feel on Interoception. And he spent almost half his life tracing these interoceptors from the viscera to the brain, to a part of the brain called the insular cortex, which we now know in our interoceptive world, um, sits deep within the brain and it is responsible for homeostasis for empathy, for our ability to make life choices. And when we have distressed interoception, we have these signals that come through the body uh, warning us that the body is not in homeostasis. It does so much more. It's kind of our seat of consciousness as well. That's what neuroscientists are beginning to tell us. So the fashion matrix and pain, we know that it's innovated with the sympathetic nervous system and hormones sit within this matrix. This it creates, it's the environment for all our neurotransmitters for our hormones too. And this is how pain happens one way. I mean, I'm, I'm taking this from um, 
fascia researcher by the name of Totsi, but also a neuroscientist or neurosurgeon in South Africa by the name of Ian Weinberg, who talks about psychoneuroendocrinology, how stress has an impact on our cytokines, pro-inflammatory cytokines. So pro-inflammatory cytokines, there's a, there's a, a clue, pro-inflammatory inflammation within the body. You have this, this kind of balance between pro-inflammatory cytokines and anti-inflammatory cytokines. And in autoimmune conditions, it is the abundance of pro-inflammatory cytokines that leads to inflammation and chronic pain within the body. Um, so this is giving you a clue around how we can experience chronic pain from some of these autoimmune conditions. And interoceptors within the fascial tissue are mechanical in nature, which means they contract. They stiffen the connective tissue. They change the biochemistry and they change the quality of the tissue. So it's really useful for us to know that. And a prominent fascia researcher by the name of Carlos Deco talks about the stiffness, especially in the lower back. So imagine these strands of connective tissue in your lower back, dense connective tissue, lower back, neck and shoulders, when you are um, stressed or anxious or when your nervous system is in dysregulation, your fascial tissue stiffens. The quality of the tissue stiffens. And I will be working with Robert Schleip. He is going to be offering some lectures on my neck certification. He's done an incredible one with the current research. And I just want to dive in a little bit to this. Um, they, did, they did a study or they did a kind of research paper on what happens when, when you stay still for an hour. Of course, they haven't done these studies on, on humans. Um, they took a, a, a mouse, placed it in a little a cylinder where it could not move for an hour. And when they studied the stiffness of the connective tissue, it stiffens just from, from sitting and doing nothing for an hour. Okay. Uh, which reminds me that if you're in your sitting position, you know, you can move around, you can just lubricate this tissue. Um, go to your lower back, check in with it. And you can self-adjust and unwind a little. The scary thing about the study was what happens after 12 hours. So Robert talks about that in, in uh, one of the lectures that we're going to be sharing. Um, the, the, the stuff that makes us hydrated and juicy and plump is hyaluronic acid and you will know within the aesthetic community that hyaluron is the stuff that uh, women inject themselves with to replump their connective tissue. You see it in creams, you see it in, in uh, beauty products. And we have hyaluronic acid everywhere within our body. And when we are in resonance and regulation, that gel becomes... Um, hydrated. So you go from feeling sticky and stiff to uh, plump and juicy is probably the way that I could describe it. I'm going to bring in a little bit of the chemistry of our fascial tissue and the endocannabinoid system in particular. So we know about, I don't know if all of you know, but we release good feel-good hormones, serotonin, a dopamine is the reward hormone. Oxytocin is the nurture hormone. And the endocannabinoid system has been this new discovery. So here's my thing about it. We have an entire universe in the body. And when we take in a substance from the outside in, there is a reaction within the body. Think about the term opioids. When we look at the term opioids for pain relief, opioids are drugs. The name opioids refers to the way opium feels when we take it within our body. But my thing about this naming the systems in the body can be very misleading because this suggests that taking cannabis will help with inflammation and chronic pain. Yes, it might. And it probably does. And I'm not going to stop anyone from taking it. But
But what I'm saying is the body has its own system. And I've put endo endocannabinoid system, you could call it something else, but the reason it's called endocannabinoid is because of the way that the plant has a similar chemistry to what's already in our body. And in the fascia world, it has been found that this chemical within our body is abundant in connective tissue, especially in the neuromuscular joints. So it means that if we can move the body in a particular way, we can reduce inflammation within the body. So to summarize, fascia stiffens under stress and you want to soften the stiffness. And one good way of doing that is pandiculation. So wherever you are right now, just imagine that you've woken up for the first time today and oh, just find that urge to stretch, unwind. And this time you're going to unwind Ooh, find and unwind those stiff areas in your body. It's often in your lower back, but if you have some kind of restriction in your body, you're not going to get to your lower spine. So we know that animals, dogs and cats, pandiculate all the time. And in some sensing, I take pandiculation, but not just in this one way. Oh, the body is doing this all the time. You have a blueprint. So for example, just sitting in your chair as you are now, if you were to fold forward as if you're picking something up from the floor that you've just dropped. So if you were to, oh, I just need to pick that up from the floor. You can try that as you're walking around in the room. So I'm going to take a moment here and explore that. Just explore that. Explore as if you're reaching up to get something from a top shelf. You can explore walking around the room and imagining that you've dropped your keys and you need to pick it up off the floor. So you can explore some of those movements right now. Um, I'm just gonna give you a couple of moments to find that. You can continue with ooh, a bit of pandiculation. And there's a reason I'm asking you to do that. It's to notice that you have an inner blueprint and it's based on nature's design. So Biotensegrity uh, refers to, and this is the work of Stephen Levin, biotensegrity refers to our body being designed more round than linear. Okay, so we have been teaching exercise and movement in a false way. Uh, we're moving against our design, but if you move to nature's design, it's really easy. You don't have to, you don't have to strengthen the body. You just need to find your blueprint. So anyway, if, you, if we can come back to pandiculation, can you just share with me, okay, maybe we'll do this later. Um, you will notice that every time you reach up, pick something up on, off the floor, does it happen on an in-breath or an out-breath? So I'm going to come back to that later. Does it happen on an in-breath or does it happen on an out-breath? And notice how the body responds when you do that. And Taking that a little further, pandiculation is just one way of nourishing and nurturing the connective tissue. And the way fascia experts describe it is squeezing the sponge. And I first heard this with my mentor, Thomas Myers. And it's been, you know, it's, uh, it refers to how the body reabsorbs water that it may have um, uh, through a chemical imbalance you might have a swelling in the body, for example. Think about joint pain, inflammation in the joints. It's because there is a chemical disruption within the body that reads, leads to this dissonance or, dysreg or dysregulation. So why squeezing the sponge? We are 80 to 90% water, but this water is not runny water, it's bound in a gel. And if you can imagine squeezing, moving and squeezing and shape-shifting, when we, when we come out of pandiculation, how does it feel? So myofascial unwinding refers to this unwinding sensation. I call it intuitive unwinding. And these are nurturing movements to restore and revitalize your fascial tissue. And when you do that, you're releasing your body's own anti-inflammatories. That's what you're doing. So here I'm giving you a little 
principle of soma sensing, the, the three S's of felt sense, you can see the shape, it's not linear. So if you come back and take a moment in your body as you are in sitting, and this time as you, as you tune in, can you find your place of rest? Find what feels good. So really rest your body. If you're in anticipation, can you just take a moment and rest? Find what feels good and begin to soften the stiffness. And as you soften your stiffness, could you ex also explore the body as a container with space? And in somatic practice, we always go to explore different ways. So what would happen if you were to stiffen and sit upright? So can you all sit upright within your body and notice how that changes your shape? Notice how it changes your state? And notice how it changes the quality of your tissue? Nothing wrong with being in anticipation, right? But it could be that we spend most of our days or most of our time in anticipation or in dysregulation. So take a moment to pause, tune in, and then can you rest? Can you soften the tissue? Imagine that your body is a container of gel and soften any areas of stiffness. The gel is stiff. What can you do to soften and fill out this container of your body? Okay. It's just a quick practice there for you. So um, coming to the end of this presentation, I want to share some of the movements that we explore in soma sensing. Pandiculation lies at the heart of it. And I'm going to share one more with you, which is the body bounce. So could you come up in standing, into standing? So if you can all come up into standing. And as you come up into standing, you can take a moment. Your body might want to move a little bit. Just listen, really listen to your body to begin with. You're just um, befriending this body that can move. Okay, so your body can move. And you may even want to take a little wonder around the room just to kind of bring your awareness to what you are paying attention to. Whatever that is, is fine. So taking a moment. And then if you can, just arrive in standing, however that is for you. And your first practice is to find the most comfortable way for you to be in standing. It could be that you take your feet a little further apart, because if there's any stiffness in the tissue, there might be some discomfort. And could you bring your body to rest in however your body is informing you so you're tuning in to, to self-adjust and how do you listen to that? Does it mean that you, you need to allow your body to soften a little more, perhaps resting through your pelvis? And one area that you can take your awareness to is your lower spine. And check in with how much space you have there within your lower spine or how stiff the tissue is in your back. Another area is your mid-spine. I call it the bra line for women, if you are, because we always, when we, put the, when we put our bra on, we're always thinking about lifting our, our breasts, right? It's just ridiculous. And we spend most of our time trying to keep everything upright instead of letting your body rest and that midline to rest, okay? So, and if you can close your eyes for a moment. So here's the thing. Can you imagine that your body is just a container of gel that is it. A gel that your skin is like an elastic. That within this gel, you have these bones that are cushioned within your gel. Ah, just let those bones find their cushioning within the gel. How can you do that? And these bones might have some kind of elastic connection with each other. So you have this kind of elastic sensation, but the gel is what you want to be paying attention to. You're 90% gel. And could you soften your body and begin a gentle little bounce? 
And the purpose of the bounce is to check in where those areas of stiffness are and where you're bouncing is at your knees. Just a gentle little body bounce at your knees. As gentle as you can, as soft as you can. And the purpose of this practice is to tune in, noticing where is your awareness? If it's outside in any other part of your body, can you bring it within? Really to the center of you and notice, ooh, I'm just this, like a jellyfish. Can I become a soft, soft, gentle bouncing? Where are my areas of stiffness? And I invite you to just explore that for a moment. How does it feel in your neck and shoulders, in your lower back? Where's your areas of stiffness? Is your head upright or can you let go? Is your head still standing stiff or can you soften the neck as well? And just let everything, like a blob of jelly, that's all you are. It's good to be there. Nothing wrong with that. And then um, every now and again, if you can take a moment to pause, as you come out of that, can you go into a stretch and yawn sensation Notice how the body responds, notice how the breath responds, and then find that unwinding, ooh, feel good. I just need to get into here and there and here and there. Ooh, right into there. As much as you can explore, ah, and then let go. And as you let go, notice how the body may come into a swaying sensation. So go there. Could you find this rocking, self-soothing sensation. And notice that we find that self-soothing sensation. What does it remind you of? Remember how it feels to rock a, a newborn baby, to soothe, yeah? So that, that may remind you of that. And where is your awareness? When you're swaying, does your body move as one or does it move separately? So noticing that. And you can pause at any moment. It's really just tuning in to find what feels good. So one of the core principles of soma sensing is to find what feels good. And then if you can take a moment, could you go back to that body bounce? Just taking that moment with yourself. And you have been bouncing gently, quietly. So we're looking at quiet. You can be quiet and small. You can be quiet. So a core principle of the practice is to find the quiet, listening to the gel, the quality of the tissue. You're tuning in. This is an interoceptive practice. Where's the stiffness? You can be quiet and go for a bigger bounce. So try going for a bigger bounce a bounce where you're actually coming off the floor. So quiet doesn't have to be small. Quiet can be big. And as you're listening to that and noticing, just notice how your body guides you. And then you can take a pause and what emerges for you from here? Is there another movement that emerges? Whatever that is, how do you go with that? Because whatever movement emerges for you from here, it's going to be spontaneous. Noticing how it emerges from within. And then if you can take a moment to pause and notice, hmm, how does it feel now? What's the quality of your tissue and your state? The state of your nervous system. How is it now? Ah, and then if you can come and come back to share with me how that feels. 
There are also unwinding sensations on the ground, which we haven't done today, but they are. Um, and as you come back to your screen, one of the things that I found that was incredibly healing for me was soma sensing in nature. And I don't mean movement, I mean interoception. How nature is felt in the body. So we often go into nature and there's a spontaneous, oh, it feels, nature feels amazing. But I'm saying you can soma sense in nature, really letting your tissue listen to nature. It's so incredibly healing. I can't even describe to you how that helped me with my uh, dysregulation. So that's just something I'd like to add that's a soma sensing practice. I would, I tell all my clients, Gosh, spend time with nature. It is in a particular way. So that comes to the end of this presentation. If you want to find me, I'm at somasensing.org. I've got some free stuff that I give away. I'm on a Chaos to Calm uh, course. I run them regularly. And if those of you who want to become Soma Sensing um, guides, just drop me a note. Okay, so I'm going to stop sharing there. And I had a question for you around... What happens when you go to pick something up from the floor? Did it happen for you on an in-breath or out-breath? Yes, Sharon, in-breath, in-breath, yes, Noreen. Yes, in-breath, yay, thank you guys. In-breath, your body self-stabilizes. People, you do not have to strengthen your core. Please stop strengthening your damn core. Your body knows how to move. And what I do in Soma Sensing is to guide you back to your true nature. So thank you, everybody. And if you have any questions, I don't know how much time I have. Oh, we're almost, gosh, I did well. I never do. I always go over time. So thanks, Steve. Was absolutely perfect timing, wasn't it? Um, I shared the link there in the chat, Soma Sensing, but I will also, so somasensing.org, if in case you're watching the recording, um, but I'll also post it in the Facebook um, review thread for this, along with Yasmin's name, so you can follow her up there. Um, the perfect little mix of experiential and theory and everything else. That was a really nice session, so thank you, Yasmin. And, um, do you have a final one sentence message for everybody about embodiment and pain? Be gentle with yourselves. Be gentle. Gentle is the new strong. Thank you, everybody. Sending you love. <laughs>